Hello everyone, I am Vikram P. Maduri here and in this session we are going to discuss the frequently asked questions on uh, FICO part 2. Going ahead, if at all, if you are looking for SAP trainings, you can contact us on our email ID is info at the jsoft.com or jsoft.com at gmail.com. And moving ahead, is it possible to maintain plant-wise uh, different GL codes? So what exactly it means is, uh, we, uh, uh, we maintain plants. So the question is, can we maintain a GL account for each plant? Okay, so yes, it is possible to maintain GL accounts, di different GL codes for e e e for a particular plant. I mean, uh, I mean to say for, this, let's say the plant 1000 and plant 2000, we can maintain a GL code for plant 1000 and we can maintain a plant uh, GL account for plant 2000 as well. So to be able to do so, the validation valuation group code should be activated. So the valuation grouping code is maintained per plant and is configured in the MM module. And account uh, codes should be maintained per valuation grouping code after doing this configuration. So uh, we would have to go ahead into the MM configuration and then we have to value, uh, va uh, we have to do the valuation grouping code uh, needs to be maintained. So valuation, if valuation grouping code is maintained, yes, you can maintain a GL code for different plant. Each each plant we can do, maintain a different GL code. Is business area at the company co company code level? No, business area is at the client level. And what this means is that the company codes can also post the same as the business area as well. So business area is at the client level and not at the company code level. What are the different scenarios under which a business area or a profit center may be defined? So this is a very general question because uh, we already have, uh, uh, why do we have to maintain a business area or why do we have to maintain a profit center? So this question is usually uh, very disputable, uh, but both business areas and profit centers are created for internal reporting. Each has its own pros and cons, but uh, many companies nowadays go for profit center as there is a feeling that business are enhancements would not support be supported by SAP in the future version. So uh, because of this reason only, because uh, uh, I mean like uh, whatever enhancements are there in the SAP business area, uh, I mean like if you don't maintain the profit center, you know, those those features cannot be impacted into the into our latest, uh, you know, uh, uh, statement. So that's the reason we had to go for uh, or profit center. So there are typical month end procedures which need to be executed for both of them and many times reconciliation might uh, become a big issue and a typical challenge in both of them is in cases where uh, you do, do not know the business area or profit center of the transaction at the time of posting. So these are the scenarios where we have to go for business area or a profit center. One is the uh, one is uh, when we have to get the get the enhancements with SAP. So and first scenario is like uh, we have to uh, e use the enhancements uh, which SAP provides. And the second one is uh, when we need uh, month and uh, procedures. So what are the problems faced when a business area is configured? The problem of splitting of account balance is uh, more pertinent in the case of account tax accounts. So uh, now whenever we are creating a business area, the major issue would be in the document splitting um, and uh, uh, and that will be related to the uh, tax accounts. So is it possible to default certain values for particular fields, for example, company code? Yes, it is possible to default values for certain fields where a, a parameter ID is present. So, and how do we do that? So that's the next next question. So, if at all, if it's possible to, uh, you know, uh, a particular, uh, I mean, like uh, fields, default particular fields. How do we do the defaulting of uh, fields? So, go to the input field to which you want to make defaults. Press F1 then click technical uh, info push button this would uh, open a window and there will be a pop-up that will open that displays the corresponding parameters id 
and if one has uh, been allocated to the field in the in the field data section so enter this parameter id using the following path on easy access screen a uh, use profile and own data user profile and own data uh, by entering this uh, that particular uh, uh, path you can you can default some value so click on parameter tab enter the parameter id code and enter the value you want as default save the user settings this this is a procedure that we have to do for defaulting the values of a particular field in a, uh, in a uh, on a particular uh, screen so what we have to do is we have to uh, put the cursor on the field in inside the input field and press f1 and then we pop up appears in that pop up we have to see the properties and then we have something called parameter id in the parameter id you have to go into the uh, easy access screen and user profile and own data and then we have to click on parameter tab enter the tab id parameter id code and enter the values you want as a default save the user settings so maybe going forward later i can show this in the sap system also but you can just try it out in the once you log in into the sap system now, which is the default exchange rate type which is picked up for all SAP transactions? So the default exchange rate type picked up for all SAP transactions is M. So that's called average rate. Default transaction is M for all the exchange rate types. So is it possible to configure the system to pick up a different exchange rate type for a particular transaction? Yes, it is possible. In the document type definition of GL, you need to attach a different exchange rate type. So the moment you you attach a different exchange rate type for a document, uh, you you can you can maintain a different. Uh, uh, you can maintain a different exchange rate for a particular transaction. So what are the what are the master data prerequisites for document clearing? So if at all, if you have to clear a document, what are the master record uh, requirements? So the GL account must be managed as an open item management. This checkbox is there in the G general ledger uh, record called open item management. It helps you to manage your accounts in terms of cleared and uncleared items. So a, a particular example would be, um, you know, uh, GR and IR goods receives and invoice uh, goods received and uh, invoice received account so in that uh, we can we can go for the, the document clearing so explain the importance of uh, goods received and uh, in, uh, invoice received uh, clearing uh, account so goods received and invoice received is an interim account so in the legacy system of a client if the goods are received and the invoice is not received the provision is made for the same so in sap at the goods receipt stage the system passes an accounting entry debiting the inventory and uh, crediting the G, uh, goods receipt or invoice uh, invoice receipt uh, account subsequently when an invoice is received this gl gr or ir uh, account is debited and the vendor account is credited that way till the time that the invoice is not received the gr ir is shown as Uncleared item, so it will be an always an open item until and unless we have the invoice receipt and GR, uh, GRIR received by us. So, how many number of line items in one single entry you can have? So, this is a very important question and a very simple question. So, the number of line items in one document you can accommodate up to triple nine lines. So, triple nine. Lines. Now, how do we how do we manage if we have more than triple nine lines? That's the next question which is going to come up. So, if if at all if we have more than triple nine line items, we have to create a another uh, document. So, so, how do you maintain the number ranges in production environment? Do you directly create it in the production box, or do you do it by means of transport? basically so what exactly it means is like you know we'll have in the real time we'll have a development server quality server and production server so what are the configurations that you do normally in the development server will be moved to quality and in the quality or testing server they'll be doing the testing uh, by the testing team and once it's been done the all your uh, configurations will be moved to the production but in the case of number ranges how do we do it so in the number range is to be created in the production client itself we are not going to we are not going to move it from development to quality quality to production we are going to configure the number ranges directly in the production server and you can transport it also by way of request but 
but creating in the production client is more advisable so uh, basically you can also do the transport but it's always advisable to do the number ranges directly in the production server so it, there might be also a question that comes up like you know can we can we actually transport our uh, number ranges yes we can do it but we normally prefer to do it in directly in production so in customizing company code productive uh, productive means what what does it denote so once the company code is live the real time transactions have started this uh, checkbox help prevent deletion of many programs accidentally so this mean this checkbox is activated just before we go live so in customizing company code productive uh, uh, means like uh, we have we we actually have blocking the configuration structure So what is done by GRIR regrouping program? So there is a GRIR grouping regrouping program. What exactly is the functionality of it? So the balance in a GRIR account is basically because of two main types of uh, transactions. One is goods delivered but invoice not received, and invoice received but goods not delivered. So either of these two, uh, there will not be a, a balance. So here the goods received. goods receipt is made but no invoice has yet been received from the vendor in such a scenario grir account will have a credit balance and in the second scenario if it are if it all if it invoice is received but goods not received then the goods not delivered then here the invoice is received from the vendor and can accounted for but goods have not been received in such a scenario grir account will have a debit balance so in the first one is the credit balance and the other one is the debit balance the grir account would contain the net value of the above two types of transactions and the regrouping program analyzes above transactions and regroups them into the correct adjustment of the account the balance uh, on jl account of a first uh, document will be adjusted so what are the functionalities available in the financial statement version so in the functional functional statement version the important most important functionality available is the debit credit shift so this is a very important thing that we have to remember debit credit shift so the functionality in the financial statement version is we need we'll be having the debit credit shift this is more important in case of bank overdraft accounts which can have a debit balance or a credit balance thus in case of a debit balance you would uh, require the overdraft uh, account to be shown on the asset side in case of credit balance you would require the account to be shown on a liability side so is it possible to print financial statements or version on a sap script form yes it is obviously possible to print the financial statements on a sap script form so how do you configure the sap script from form financial uh, financial statement version so basically the the forms will be will be configured in a transaction code called nase nase but uh, yes it is uh, possible uh, to generate um, uh, a form from the financial statement version and print the financial statements on a space script form in the customizing customizing for a financial statement version uh, select the fsv you created and uh, choose go to generate form so one column or two columns forms you can also copy form from the standard system so you can just try it out in the uh, on the path you can just go ahead into the path of the uh, you know uh, path uh, into the form and document and then we can print it maybe i'll show this one on the system as well later so is it possible to generate a financial statement form automatically yes it is possible to generate a form automatically financial statement form automatically so is it possible to keep fi posting period open only for certain fi gl accounts yes gl accounts yes is it it is possible to keep open the fi posting period only for uh, certain gl codes we can do this uh, we have uh, an option when we are creating the uh, uh, posting periods we can configure it only for uh, certain gl codes so how do you keep the fi posting period only for certain gl codes this is another one so how do you do that so we have to go to ob52 transaction and click on new entries maintain an interval or a single gl code for the account type yes with the posting period variant if the gl codes are not in sequence then you need to maintain further entries for the 
posting period variant and account type as yes so i mean what we need to 